All right, King Me. For what? I just made it across the board. You did not. That man wasn't even on the checkerboard a moment ago. You just put him there. Are you accusing me of cheating, Horace? I'm not only accusing you of cheating. I'm saying it straight out. You're a cheater. Why I should clock you for that? Good. That would be a lot more civil than sitting here with this ridiculous ball game. Jenny, they're starting again. Speaking of civility, what's with the babysitter snitching on us every five minutes? He's keeping the two of you honest and out of trouble. That's what's with Sylvester. You should be glad he's here. So far, nobody's been disqualified, have they? I'm telling you, Horace, I made it across the board fair and square. I demand you crown me this instant. Fine, then. Wow! Did anyone get the number of that bus? You know the rules, Horace. Instant disqualification. Come on, Lazar. We've got to get you up to the pole vaulting competition. I've already got the bars set up up back. Pole vaulting. Couldn't we just, like, knit or something? I realized that people didn't have one clue about fetal alcohol syndrome in 1890, but, but I'm pretty sure that just about anyone from any era knows that it's not really smart to get drunk when you're a few days away from giving birth to a baby. Most people would know that by instinct, sure. Why do I get the feeling that there is a butt coming here? Because there is. I knew it. I just knew it, so what is it? I just hate being sent into these situations blindly, Albert. So just tries to give me as much info as you can this time, please. The woman you are next to is about to die in childbirth. That is, um, that's pretty. Well, that's as straight to, to the point as you can get, I guess. What about the baby? Unknown exactly. Some information we have indicates that it survived, although exactly how this came to be, we can't really say. If it does survive, one thing can be certain. To this mother, in these surroundings, even if she had lived, it would have gone through a rough life. Without her, however, you can guarantee that its life would have been a testament to its birthplace. Hell's Kitchen. What do we know about Allison here? Born sometime in the winter around 1854. Had her first child in 1868. Records from this era were far from complete. Most were destroyed by natural catastrophes that occurred as the decades rolled by. What happened to her first child? Did it survive? No, it was still burn. Oh man, that must have been awful. To be that young and to lose a child like that. Was not uncommon for this time period. She had her next child the following year. It suffered the same fate. As the years followed, she had more children. 
at the rate of about one a year. Some lived, most didn't. Around two years ago, best we can tell, about after her 20th child overall from her third husband, she went into a severe postpartum depression. Only medical professionals didn't know of such things in the 1880s. They barely knew about them in the 1980s. Allison ended up in a mental hospital for women. The mental hospitals of this era are really nothing more than torture chambers. After many failed escape attempts, she finally succeeded, only end up in a house of ill repute. All of this happened to one woman, to Allison. How'd she end up here? From her new profession, she'd make a little money, then lose it. She'd get drunk, follow a man, then settle down wherever she woke up the next day. That is, until she got drunk again. She moved around a lot. This went on for a few years. She got pregnant a few more times. None went, none went to term. No wonder she drinks to forget. Now she's here in Hell's Kitchen. The end of the line. Where well, there's nowhere else to go. Either she realizes it, turns around, and heads back to civilization, and seeks help, or she dies. Her baby dies before it's born. After, how her story ends up. How her story ends now depends on you, Bunsen. Get her to realize she needs help for her baby's sake, for her sake, or we lose them both. It comes down to that, right, Albert? Basically, what about her family? Are uh, any of her children still alive? Three of them, yes. They are waiting for her in New Orleans. Maybe they shouldn't be. After all, they've been through with her. But they still love her. They still want her back. Perhaps it's a sign of what they within Allison. The love, the torment. Maybe it's something that will help you, Bunsen. The love and forgiveness that's in Allison's children and wanting her back. It's also within her. If they can forgive their mother, maybe Allison can forgive herself for all their bad choices. It's up to you to find out. When's the baby due? In four days. That of course can be changed based on the stress levels of current events. Albert, how am I supposed to correct a lifetime of bad choices and addiction by the time she delivers in just four days? Mervyn, what are you doing with that? Why on earth did you find it? Give me that right now. It's too dangerous to be left laying out in the open. Or in the hands of... 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 um... I don't care if you wrote down the pizza delivery number at the back of it. That book could change all of history if certain people get their hands on it. You can't keep it. Jingles, the time chamber, it's doing something. You better get in here now. Nuts! Don't you do anything with that book until I've had a talk with you, mister. Quick, we've got to get him into the bathroom under hot water. I can get him into the tub, but after that you're on your own, Mama MT. Okay, I've got him. Let's head upstairs. stayed in school, maybe my life wouldn't have turned out like this. Maybe I could have made something of myself. Maybe things would have been better. How old were you when you left? I left as soon as I could, when I was 16. As soon as I was legal, I was gone. I thought I was so old. I thought I was such an adult. I was just stupid. 
but I thought my life was complete. It was just completely wasted. Being 16 doesn't make you an adult child. How well I know now. I'm 26 and I don't even feel like I'm an adult. 10 years older with child. A husband who is who knows where doing who knows what. Me, homeless and out on the street and I so don't feel like an adult. But when I was 16, I made an adult choice that affected the rest of my life. That screwed up the rest of my life. If only I could go back and change it. There's no going back, child. No redos in life. I know. I know. But even if there were, I'm not so sure I could. If I did, I wouldn't have Wendell. I don't know that I could erase him from my life even if I wanted to. That is true. You couldn't undo all that bad without erasing that one bit of good. I have to admit, that is one mighty big bit of good that you've got there, Margaret. Everyone in this house has just fallen in love with your son, especially Lazar, although I am suspect of the reason. What makes you say that? Every time Nana Sophie gets near Wendell, for whatever reason, little Wendell spits up on her. Lazar just thinks that's the funniest thing in the world. Boys will be boys. I know Lazar loves him, though. I see him holding Wendell in his arms and rocking him to sleep late at night. I'm glad to hear you say that. It makes me feel so happy, Mama Bear. If only others could benefit from our mistakes. All those youngsters out there in schools. Fifteen-year-olds on the cusp of turning sixteen. On the verge of dropping out. Making the same choice you made ten years ago. About to follow the same path you made. If only you could share your wisdom with them about what's happened with your life. The path you've led. What's happened to you in those ten years. Maybe you could prevent them from making the same choice you did. Keep them in school instead of dropping out. Then maybe your choice, your dropping out, wouldn't seem like such a loss to you. No. No, it wouldn't. If I could help others not make my mistakes by telling them about my life, I think it would help me come to terms with those mistakes better. It's something to think about anyway, Margaret, when you're ready. When you are ready. I know you've got a lot going on in your head. Your husband, what he's done to you, why he went away. But when you're ready to talk about it all, I'll be here to listen. Then when you're ready to share it with others, just maybe, it will be able to do some kids good out there. You just never know. Thank you, Mama Bear. You've given me a lot to think about. Don't mention it, child. Say, whatever happened to that kid from the movie you were showing me? Did he turn out all right? Well, as for him... Some potential dropouts find a lifeline thrown to them by chance. Danny Knox was a contemporary of Joe, and like him, a youngster who had reached ninth grade with no real links between him and school. He wasn't doing well in class, and he had no real reason for trying any harder. He, too, hated the whole setup. But then one day, at the suggestion of an attentive teacher, he decided to try out for the track squad. Now, Danny, that's a pretty good try. Uh, as I told you earlier, we just put you in here for experiments, see how much spring you had. And there's probably nothing wrong with your spring. However, from watching out here in the warm-up, I'm sure that you have better leg speed, and we probably should get you in a sprint. So uh, before you go up today, we'd like to try you in a 100-yard dash. OK. The cinder path was to become Danny's road to friends, to a sense of belonging in school, to personal achievement, and eventually to better classroom grades. 
Extracurricular activity would help him to find his way back to the curriculum. And Daddy, the thing that uh, I'm really enthused about is you running here with all these sprinters, men and 120 men and men off our sprint relay team here, and you ran third place in that. It's a real surprise, and your time is 10-7. Nice job. And, uh, I realize you're new out here for track, but you find 10-7 is pretty remarkable for a new boy out here in his first time trial. So uh, track is something that you have to work real hard at, and it takes a lot of uh, time and a lot of attention to detail. But I'm sure if you want to be with us, well, we want you, and we'll work hard with you, and the men here will be happy to have you among our group out here. Nice going. Thank you. Thank you. After school activities often help young people understand why they must study. Making A's and B's is often too abstract a goal for an adolescent, but the promise of career and prestige is a tangible target to shoot at. High school programs like this Candy Striper Club show youngsters what their roles may be in later years, roles that can only be played if their schoolwork earns them the right to take their parts. A few hours a week of adult responsibility can be a bridge to increased maturity. Today, most high schools have specialists who watch over the academic careers of the students. School counseling, still grossly understaffed in most of our communities, is the best antidote to underachievement, the strongest deterrent to dropouts. The school counselor is trained to watch for danger signs and to help in an emergency. He sees the students as persons with individual oh, problems. Going. No, pretty good. I was a little bit disturbed when I received this six weeks grade report. I thought you were going to pick up in English a little bit. Well, it all seems sort of pointless to me. Pointless? Well, I think I'm going to quit school at the end of the semester. Well, what seems to be the trouble? Oh, well, everything in general, I guess. Isn't your boyfriend graduating this semester? Yes, he might get a scholarship to state. Does this have something to do with your decision? Yes, but the main reason is my parents. Well, what seems to be the difficulty? I just want a little freedom. They just treat me like a child. I'm just tired of it. Everything I do, everything I say. My mother has to even come with me when I buy my clothes. It just seems like she doesn't even trust me. They tell me who I can go out with, what time I have to be in. I have to bring my friends to the house before I can go out with them or anything. It's just terrible. I feel like I'm in prison. Have you talked this over with Bob? Yes, I have. He isn't pushing me at all. Of course, he doesn't want me to quit. Well, what are you going to do? I'll get a job, any kind of a job. What could you do? Oh, I could get a job in the department store or a waitress, anything. Is that really the kind of job you want? Well, no, I'd like to be a secretary, but I realize that takes education and a high school diploma. Do you think you could make enough at these jobs to live as you are now? Hmm. I think I could manage. Really? Of course you couldn't. You're really after independence. But I, I wonder if this is a way to go about it. You might wind up with less freedom than you have now. If you stay in school a little while longer, you'll be on the road to real independence, if it only means getting the kind of job you want. Now, I know you could get along with your parents if you really wanted to. Why don't you think it over a little while longer? Well, I don't think there's anything to think about it. I've made up my mind, and I don't like school, and I want to drop out. Like Joe, Linda is anxious to grow up. Now, not later. She feels that leaving school means leaving humiliation and childhood behind. The counselor who understands adolescents and respects them can very often help them to change their minds. But Joe reached the beginning of his 11th year in the school system without counseling, without any real ties to fellow students, without motivation for the hard work of overcoming his scholastic handicaps. That first day of the 11th grade was the day Joe Conklin went out into the world, dropped out into the world by the back door. Even then, he wasn't sure he was doing the right thing. Even youngsters who hate school have strong feelings holding them to the pattern of our system. He wasn't breaking any law now. 
but he felt as though he were. For few 16-year-old boys are men. They still need the companionship of other 16-year-olds. They still need supervision and protection. The grown-up's world is frightening and challenging, even when it is attractive. day long, Joe struggled for a decision. He wandered and looked at the fascinating surface of the adult's world, wanting to get into it, wondering how. This was a day Joe would always remember. The day he started the endless task of trying to gain entrance into a strange world without a passport. Most schools in America today are trying to keep their Joes from dropping out. All surveys prove that without high school diplomas, the children of the age of automation are virtually doomed to a miserable life. Even the simplest opportunities that are open to young people demand a fair amount of academic achievement, and the schools are aware of the situation. One of the helpful steps that educators are taking is the expansion of curriculum to fit the needs of individual students. Courses that involve the personal interests of the students are being added in the hope that they may motivate harder work in the academic subjects that are related to them. All right, that 60,000 is over. That's good enough. Finish your cut. Go ahead and start your machine. What is your dwell? 35. 35. And even if they fail to improve scholastically, Many of them are gaining skills and self-confidence that will help them in the adult world. Some schools have organized programs of work experience education and have added a new specialist to the high school faculty. This man arranges part-time jobs for students who might otherwise become dropouts. He contacts local businessmen who can offer employment under approved conditions. But he is an educator, not an employment agent. If the student cannot learn on the job, it is not acceptable. He found this building operation, for instance. The electrical contractor was willing to take on a junior apprentice with the idea of breaking him into the craft while he finished his schoolwork. Gus works four hours a day at tasks that are constantly showing him why he must learn math, a subject that almost caused him to flunk out. Now that he deals with numbers and fractions in his calculations, the math doesn't seem so mysterious. The work experience educator makes it his business to visit the building site at intervals, to see that Gus is right for the job and the job is right for Gus. For Gus is still in school. He spends four hours a day in class under a special program that will enable him to graduate along with his proper grade. Many of the boys and girls who are enrolled under this work experience plan show a considerable increase of interest in their entire school program. Have there ever been any cases in which the Attorney General and the Public Defender were up against each other in court? They are more serious, they try harder, they do not have to be pushed to learn. For one thing, their confidence in themselves has been restored. For another, they do not feel that they are alone, humiliated, branded as failures, and thirdly, they see some hope for their futures. They are assured that they will enter the adult world by the front door, 
Little wonder they are interested in what goes on in that world. But the 4-4 plan, as it is called, does not operate impersonally. The progress of the students is constantly checked by supervisor and counselor. Mm -hmm. And we finally found him a job with Mr. Calaris, a, an electrical contractor. How is he doing in the classroom now, by the way? Very good. Uh, his grades are coming up. I talked to his instructor, and he's getting along better with the other students and himself as well. He's beginning to learn the practical value of what he's learning here. That's You've talked with his parents? I talked to his parents just last week, and they're delighted with the change of attitude. And, of course, I'm very happy because this means he'll be able to graduate from school. Our Joe got a job when he left school a year ago. Then he got a car, souped it up, found himself a girl. Now at 17, he's lost that job and two others. The unskilled worker is the last to be hired and the first to be fired. Every new machine, every business recession ends his employment once again. And so Joe will go on searching for jobs, seeking the way in, driving to nowhere. When did he lose his way? Would someone like to volunteer to help us with this? Why don't you do something about it? Are you through now? Yeah. Over a ravine. Ravine. Doesn't matter how you get it, just as long as you get the buck. That's what I always say. For Joe and thousands and thousands like him, there are no counselors, no remedial reading classes, no help at school or at home, no help from community agencies. And remember, Almost a million Joes a year drop out of school and are lost. Lost to their time. Lost to themselves. For a little while, Joe still has a chance. If his community, his school, his neighbors want to help, if he himself wants to be helped, he can still turn back and rediscover what he has given up. The chance to learn. If he doesn't, his search will be endless. There is no shortcut. you are saying, what you are admitting to, once I leave this place, Ariel, I have free reign. That you can move freely, yes. Let me remind you, however, that I will know what you are doing and have power to intervene in events. You would do well to remember this. Your lackey, Albert, does not frighten me one bit, Ariel. Not that I should care, but curiosity has, I'll admit, been a weakness of my own. What difference does it make that the giant mutant monster beast is in Waterford? She lives there, more or less. Why is it an issue now? Because you are there, Orville. I am? Oh, yes, I am. Aren't I? I'd almost forgotten about that episode in my life. Since you are going back to the same palm, to the same place, you already exist. You would do best to forget nothing. No, it would not do for my younger self to get a hold of what future lay in store for him, regardless of how grand it may be. What is your choice, Arvo? I'll fulfill my part of this bargain. I may be things not so grand, but once I give my word, I keep it. Even if I do think it's a lot of hogwash. There are so many easier ways to go about doing this. But this is your show. If this is how you want to write it, so let it be. I'll play along up to a point. But if I find out at any time that you're just stalling for time, because you know with this cloak I'm powerful enough to take you out. With the cloak? You already know if I'm lying or not? Yes, I do. So be it. Once this is finished, Ariel, I'll be back. 
for what is rightfully mine. Full control of the universe. The next time we meet outside this crisis, it will be to conquer. Winner take all. Recently, I've been called a lot of things, but no, I was not the angel of death. Albert, I, I figures never around when you need him. Did you say something? Um, who are you anyway? I was just a friend. When I came in here, you looked like you could use one. Comes in the class. Is there any left? I don't think so, ma'am. From what I could see, the place is dried out. Figures just like me. Oh, ma'am, don't talk like that. Things can't be as bad as all that, can they? What do you know about it? In this stinking town for who knows how long. Not a shot to be had in... in... Ma'am? I thought you said you want the angel of death. That I did, ma'am. I mean, I'm not. Then why do I feel like I'm about to die? You can't be, ma'am, not for another four days. What are you talking about? Have you been hitting the bottle too? Oh my, of all my babies, this would be the one that makes it to get birth in the middle of nowhere without a doctor or anything, or uh -huh. anyone but some silky satchel and a thing around. Give birth, you mean your baby, it's coming? Oh, boy, Albert, where are you? 